This is the most important video we have ever created. It's all about coffee. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all the different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way every single time we discuss this most crucial of beverages, you'll be alerted to it. So if you've been watching our channel for any length of time, you know Rachel loves her coffee. Just a little bit. I think she may love it more than she loves me. No, it's number two. <laughs> okay. So we one of the most common comments that we get or questions that we get on Facebook or Instagram in the comment section of YouTube videos is how do you make your coffee in the morning? And the answer to that is lots of different ways because it totally depends on our mood. Yeah, sometimes we're going to use keto chow. Sometimes we use butter. And then sometimes we use a raw egg. And sometimes we do a combination of all three or two or one. Yeah, now I know, and we've discussed this before, raw egg sounds gross. And it does. But trust me, give it a shot. So in this video, we're going to show you how we make our coffee three different ways. And the reason we're making this video is because when we do show how we make our coffee in vlogs and things like that, uh, usually it's making an entire pot because between the two of us, we drink the entire pot. So we just kind of make the whole thing as yeah. an entire pot. But that doesn't apply to everybody. No, some people are normal human beings and they only drink one cup at a time and the cup is a normal sized human yeah. cup. Yeah, so watch through the whole thing. We're gonna show you how to make it three different ways. Then at the end, we're gonna give you a few tips to keep it hot, to uh, maybe make it a little different way and some alternatives that we may not show in this video. So let's go over what we're gonna need. Obviously, the first thing we're gonna need is a coffee cup. Yes. Then we're going to need some coffee. So again, a lot of times we just take the entire pot and we pour it into our blender. So since we're not doing that, what we do is we would take our coffee and go ahead and just fill up your coffee cup and leave a little bit of room for all of your add-ins. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm kind of using this as a measuring cup. You may even count like yeah. as you pour it. But once you've done this a few times, you know exactly how much you're going to use. Next thing you're going to need is, for one of them anyway, an egg. Yay. Now these eggs are from our girls in the backyard. Here, I'll give you the whole thing so you can put it in there. And what I'm gonna tell you to do, again, little tip ahead of time, if you're using egg, get it to room temperature. You can maybe put it on the counter or you can put it in a warm water bath, or you can do like we do in go in the backyard and get it from the girls in the morning. Clearly, we have two different size layers back there right now. <laughs> okay, next thing we're going to need for one of the other versions or a combination is some butter. Butter. And then finally, the third way is with keto chow. What? No, not peaches and cream though. Well, you can use Think any again, friends. version keto chow. Okay, now I'm backtracking with you. Okay, you ready? Yes. So I think today we're going to make egg coffee. Okay. That's gonna be the first one. So here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna take your blender. Now you can also use an immersion blender. You could use a you know little uh, frother. I find it works best this way. I think it's the easiest way to either use this. Uh, second would be an immersion blender, but I find it to be a little messy. So I like using a blender. So you don't need a Vitamix. You can use a super cheap one, like one that's like $25 at Walmart. Absolutely. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take our coffee and we're going to pour it into our Vitamix or our blender and I'm lifting it like this so I don't spill any. And I'll do yours at the same time because we're gonna just do a double cup. Yeah. Okay? Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to make sure this is on low. Low. Okay? And we're gonna do the part that Rachel absolutely hates. <sighs> 
turn it on. Yeah, but it's low, so we're, do we're doing well. Okay, now, again, today is gonna be egg coffee. So we're gonna take two eggs, one per cup. So you would half this recipe if you were just making one Absolutely, cup. right? So one egg per cup. And we're going to go ahead, while the blender is running, dump the egg into there. And you can see, as we put the egg in, immediately the coffee gets nice and creamy. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn the blender up a little bit. This is where it gets dicey. And just for Rachel's sanity, we're gonna go ahead and put the lid on. Sanity's important. And we're gonna go ahead and just turn it up for just a second. When you put it on high, you're gonna get a nice froth on the coffee. Yeah. Okay, and I'm just gonna take the lid off to let people see what it looks like. And look at that, look how frothy that is. So we'll go ahead and turn it down so it doesn't spill over the top. Oh. And we're done. And you can see, look at the froth that's on that coffee. And the only thing added to it was the eggs, that's yep. it. Now, when you pour this, you may get some froth. So you could use a spoon, um, but we're just gonna finish it off anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and there's our coffee. Look at that froth. We're gonna put some of this froth into yours as well. Thank you. And then just pour the coffee. And again, this is something fun. Maybe you don't want to Lion King this around the office or, you know, at home, but it's delicious. And I'm telling you, nobody is going to know that there's an egg in it. It doesn't taste like you're drinking coffee with scrambled egg chunks. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Delicious. So let's talk about the second way that we make our keto coffee. With butter. Now I know butter sounds weird to somebody who's not on keto. They're like, ew, butter in your coffee? But let's face it, butter is simply heavy cream that's been churned. So it's the same thing, but with less carbs. Yeah, and it's adding a creaminess and a richness to the coffee that kind of works with the bitterness of coffee. Yeah, now one thing when it comes to butter, a question that we get asked a lot is, should you use salted or unsalted? And my answer is whatever you like. Personally, we never buy unsalted butter. I use salted butter for everything. Even if I'm following a recipe and it calls for unsalted butter, I always use salted butter. And when we're using salted butter in our coffee, I don't taste the salt. Now, if I add extra salt, I will taste it. Same here. I definitely think it has to be a personal preference though, because if you are, you know, very susceptible to a salt taste and too much salt will really, you know, ruin your palate, that's one thing, but for us, I think it takes a lot for us to even think of something as too salty. And the longer you're on keto, the more you crave salt. So when you first get started, a lot of times people will say things like keto chow or keto brick is too salty, but after about six months, your palate starts to change and you start adding salt to everything. Like I add salt to keto chow, I add salt to keto brick. So just, Wherever you are at the beginning, just know that you may like it a little bit different later on. Now, making keto coffee with butter is probably the easiest way. We do use a blender just because I think it's easy. Uh, when it comes to using butter, one of the problems you can have is if you don't blend it up well, you get like that oil thing on top. Remember, right. oil and water don't mix and butter is nothing but a fat source. You can use one of these little immersion blenders, as we mentioned earlier, uh, just you're gonna have to really get it, you know, blending well. I'm just not a huge fan of these because I make a big mess. You know, I, yeah. I, I've i never mastered the art of putting it in there and not having the coffee overflow as it starts spinning. But I you can use that. I always put just a touch too much liquid and yeah, then it becomes a, a splash zone. Or even if I don't make a mess, I'm anticipating a mess and so, it worries me and I don't like that. It's so much easier to just keep a blender. And with this one in particular, you don't need a Vitamix. No, you, any blender, any, any blender even an immersion blender, whatever you have, that's gonna work. So I already have one cup of coffee in here. Same thing, now again, we generally just do an entire pot and split it between the two of us, but we add the same amount of butter regardless of the size of coffee. So that means when we're ha having a cup like this, it's probably a little bit less creamy, a little bit more creamy than if we're having the big cup. But I don't add more butter to a bigger cup because I don't want to have that much more butter. Right. One of the biggest issues that people have when they start making keto coffee early on 
is their keto coffee becomes three, four, five hundred calories. Yeah. That's a giant meal. Well, and I think that you need to acknowledge this as a meal, no matter what you're putting. If you're putting egg in it, it's a meal. If you're putting butter into it, it's a meal. If you're putting keto chow in it, it's a meal. It is in a beverage form, but it is a meal. Yep. So we have the one cup in there. We're going to go ahead and put the other cup in. And again, I just put it in this cup for measurement sake. So we make sure you have the right amount. So we're going to go ahead and turn that on. And then we use one tablespoon of butter for each of us. So that's 100 calories of fat. It gives a good creaminess and it's a great way to start the day. So I'll go ahead and put that in there. I will put the top on that we just rinsed and just go ahead and you want to blend this a little high to make sure you get all of that butter mixed in with the coffee. Now, if you do worry about your coffee getting cold, you, again, use room temperature butter. So we always have this butter container sitting on the counter. That took three years to get Rachel to do that. It's worth it though. But it's great, not only for something like this, where you wanna you know, not like cool down your coffee, but also it makes it great for spreading on things and stuff like that. And again, you can see that you do get a nice froth on here. Now, if I was smart, actually I do have one right here. I move things over. What I do is you can take like a little spatula or a spoon and just stop some of the foam from coming out. Right. This way you can fill up your whole cup of coffee. And then add the foam later if you want it. And then we'll put the foam on top, just like you would in a coffee house. This is a coffee house. This is there a we house go. of coffee. Look at coffee. that foam. Nice. Perfect amount. Here we Cheers go. to your day. Mm, delicious. And we're not even adding any sweetener. Yeah. Well, it's one more day and we've got one more way to make coffee. So, so far we've showed you how we make our coffee with egg. We've showed you how we make our coffee with butter. And the last way that we make our coffee is with Keto, Keto Chow. Chow. And this honestly works with pretty much all of the sweet flavors. I, I mean, I haven't nice. tried it with like pina colada and stuff. But we've had it with raspberry cheesecake, with chocolate, chocolate toffee, Irish cream, um, caramel macchiato, vanilla, you name it, salted caramel, pumpkin spice, eggnog. Chocolate peanut butter. All of the ones. Well, we got the chocolate peanut butter right here. So again, when we make our coffee, just a reminder, we generally do the entire pot at once. And when we do the entire pot, because we're splitting between the two of us, we do a full serving of keto chow. But we're showing you how you would make it with just one cup. So let's pull over our blender. Now with Keto Chow, you kind of do need a blender or an immersion blender, but you could also put it into like one of our Too Crazy Keto travel mugs and give it a really, really good shake. Really good. Just be aware though, under pressure with that heat, make sure you're careful when you pop open the top because it can explode. I wouldn't do it in a plastic blender bottle because again, hot coffee. And so what we're gonna do is once again, I already have one cup in here. We're gonna go ahead and just measure out one cup because I'm used to just actually pouring the entire pot. It's nice to see two actual cups. Yep, we'll go ahead and put it into our blender. Once again, I'm gonna turn on the blender. It's low enough that I'm not worrying about it splashing out. Low and slow. Now, when we're making a standard cup of coffee, which I would say this, 16 ounces, something yeah. like that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use about a half a tablespoon to a tablespoon of keto chow. Be aware that keto chow is going to make it thick. So I would start off with about a half a tablespoon for a cup this size and then see where you wanna go. And that's what we're gonna put in there. So I put in one tablespoon for two cups. We're gonna go ahead just to make sure there's no splashing at all. Thank you. Give it a little high up spin, just a couple of seconds, and then turn it off. Now, with keto chow, I generally do like to use a little bit of butter or an egg. So we generally don't do keto chow on its own because keto chow is good with a fat. And generally, if you're looking for the vitamins and the nutrients, if you're just using this for you know, a creamer, not a right. big deal. But if you are trying to get some of the vitamins and nutrients, you wanna make sure you're taking in at least 10 grams of fat. So that would be a tablespoon of butter, or it would be an egg, or it could be uh, one tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. So, uh, two, I'm sorry, two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. So we will go ahead and just pour this off. 
Now, chocolate peanut butter actually has some fat in there yeah. because and that's why it's higher in calories and carbs because they use peanut flour, which has fat in there. And you'll see that because it is a little bit greasy. Yep. Could have given you a little bit more coffee really there. Really good, but we could trade cups. There you go. All right, that's good. Ready? Yeah. Think. Cheers to your day. Mm. Good flavor. Really good. Honestly, I'd probably bump it up to about a tablespoon for this size cup. But again, I would tell you to start slow because again, it will thicken up. It's keto chow. It's got the acacia fiber in there. So let's talk about a couple of things uh, that will help you along. Number one, make sure you're using a blender or an immersion blender, or you can use one of these. If you're good with this thing and don't make a mess, like if I were to put it in there right now, splash we're going to splash it up. Also, try out different ways. You know, so again, we a lot of times will do for the whole pot of coffee, a couple of tablespoons of butter and an egg. So we're splitting that between the two of us, or we'll do a serving of keto chow and a tablespoon of butter and just figure out which way you like it. Personally, we like to mix it up a little bit. But my advice would be give them all a shot. Yeah. Because the one you Especially think, the egg. The one you think there ain't no way may be the one you like the best, but you'll never know if you don't try it. I feel like that's how you were with the egg, right? Oh, I know it's how I was. I, I for a long time, was like, you got to try it with the egg. And you're like, no. And then I finally did it, and I didn't tell her there was egg in there. And the she's Lion like, King it. this is the best coffee ever. And pretty much every day, Rachel's now like, can we have coffee with egg in it? Whether it's egg or egg and keto chow, but she wants the egg in there. Well, and if you're talking about what keeps me full... From meal to meal, if my first meal happens to be coffee with egg in it, I do find I go a lot longer before I'm hungry again. Yep. So that's going to be the end of this video. Let us know down in the comment section, how do you like your coffee? Oh, by the way, you can do this with tea as well. We yeah. had it with a lot of different teas and it's just as delicious. Like one of the things I used to love, uh, I don't drink a lot of tea now because Rachel's such a big coffee drinker and as usually we have made. But I always liked tea. I guess it's almost like British style, right? I, it had to have cream in it. I never wanted just black tea. I always wanted cream in my tea. And it works really well. The butter, the egg, all of it works really well in tea as well. So let us know down in the comment section. Do you drink coffee? Do you drink tea? How do you like to make it? What would be your preferred method? My preferred method of tea would be coffee in it, obviously. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over there. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we have coffee, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.